Regression to the mean is a tricky fallacy that has to do with causal explanations. Let me give you a brief example before I go for a more thorough explanation. Let us say that you are an instructor at a shooting range, for instance, and one of your students performed poorly at the last drill. So you proceed to scold him or her, and at the next drill, he does or she does much better. If you are convinced that this improvement in the performance was related to your intervention, your behavior, without any possible alternative explanation, then you have fallen for the regression to the mean fallacy. This is the classical example that we typically find in textbooks. Let me now use a more complicated one from my own making. I guess that most of you in your life have gone through a national exam. Now put yourself in the shoes of the dean of a university whose students are going through such a national exam. And one year your students perform very poorly, putting your institution at the bottom of the list of universities for this particular competition. What would you do? If you feel concerned by the issue, you are probably going to enforce new policies to make sure that students are better trained. So suppose you manage to do exactly that. A year passes and this time your students perform really better, just like the student in, on the shooting range. Your institution is far from being in the top 10, but at least it is closer to the average. So what are you going to conclude from that? If you immediately conclude that your policy was efficient and that the average, the average grade increased in, um, because uh, and it, the increase in the average grade, I mean, is a proof of the effectiveness of your policy, then you are committing again the regression to the mean. It somehow relates to the confusion between correlation and causation and belongs to the non causa pro causa family, like the post hoc ergo propter hoc. To understand why it is a fallacy, you have to get an intuitive understanding about what is a continuous variable and what is a distribution. The continuous variable is a variable that can take any value between a certain interval. In our example, we could say that the average grade of your students could be anywhere between 0 and 100. If we compute the average grade for all institutions, it looks like this curve, where you have here the top performing institutions, here the average ones, and uh, where most universities are situated, and here the least performing one. By the way, that's why there's a peak, because most institutions are here in their average, and your institution, before you took measures like policies, uh, on the first year is like at the bottom. The idea behind this curve, which is called the uh, normal distribution, by the way, is that the highest values of the y-axis are the most likely to occur. The fact that you were here is pretty unlikely due to this distribution, but it happened. Now the next year, you have a new batch of students. If you were to predict the average score of your students based upon this distribution, well, where do you believe it would land? Statistically speaking, it would land closer to the mean, around here, where the probability are the highest. Just because this is how probabilities work. It is unlikely to have two extreme measurements in a row. If you have if you had an extreme measurement at a given time, whether it was a good grade or a bad grade, doesn't matter, it is likely that the next, more likely that the next measurement will be closer to the mean, regardless of what policies you enforce. Now, it does not mean that your policies were not efficient, but probabilities alone are enough to explain why, between the year of the failure and the following year, the average score of your students was closer to the mean the average score increased. And that is why it's called a regression to the mean. I admit that understanding this fallacy is a bit more complicated than understanding the others because it requires some understanding on how probabilities work. There are many good videos on the topic and if you feel the need to delve longer into it, I suggest that you watch the one made by Vergitasium, a very famous YouTuber who explained the fallacy in a pretty clear and thorough manner.